Oi oi, I'm Specimen. This is the Keg Smasher, episode 3. Let's go. We start the game off playing some Skelliger and we're up against some Scoyatel. Now, the starter deck in Scoyatel, it has a ton of carryover. So, our best chance at winning this is just making sure we take round 1 at all costs and then hit him with Erdrick. So, already we're seeing uh, just how good Erdrick can be. He's obviously the card we packed in our last episode, the Silver Spy and Skelliger. So, that just gives us those two factions in Nilfgaard for Cantarella and Skelliger with Erdrick to really do some bits. And this guy looked pretty good, honestly, but he goes ahead and Blood Curd and Roars. We take the round really, really comfortably and we just go ahead and Erdrick, like I say. So, just really manipulating the rounds. That's going to be how we're winning best at this level. Just trying to get card advantage for round three and then see out from there. We took a loss in the last episode and that was just by dry passing, trying to be a little bit too big for our boots, a little bit too clever. Um, we're going to start off here with a fog. As long as he can't clear it, it's going to be a super easy win. We've got the one card advantage and the fog for the whole thing. So here's his last card. The lacerate is not going to be enough. We take this one really easy now the beautiful thing about this series is it's not necessarily all about the gameplay the thing that is most interesting to me and probably to you watching at home is the kegs have we got enough to open a keg let's find out well there's 15 all there and we level up and get a keg so you love to see it we're closing in as well on the next rank so that should be some keg or kegs or something quite soon let's see what shoot gives us flash is blue you can see i'm pretty excited Wyvern, Ballista, Trebuchet, Barbazagli. Barbazagli, who I always think sounds like an Italian footballer, is pretty good. But there's nothing really doing too much for us there. Obviously, the Drum and Shield Maiden is a no. We've got all of them. We don't use them anyway. Um, and the Wild Hunt ship. We don't actually have any Wild Hunt units really in our starter deck. Uh, these days, it is more a fog-oriented starter deck. So we go ahead and take the Crash and Trap. Second game here, Crack on Crate versus Crack on Crate. I've got Erdlerick, chances are he doesn't, so let's try and use that to our advantage. Start of the game, nothing really too spectacular happens. I've got an engine down on the board, he's not got anything. Uh, Jengi comes down, which just kind of caught me off guard. I was pretty impressed with the fact that he had Jengi. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Hialmar comes down for him. I've got a few options. I can go for the high roller goodness of Giant Boar and just hope not to hit Lord of Unvict. However... I'm like, you know what, let's uh, let's buff this Lord of Unvict up. Let's hope he can't deal with it. So the Skelliger starter deck has Hunters and Triss to deal with that. However, if he doesn't have two of them, it should be pretty comfortable. Can he deal with it? Well, he recons, searching for an answer, doesn't find one. I want to get out of this round kind of soon. If I can go into the last round with Raw Decree and uh, Hjalmar, Raw Decree is going to be playing me Triss. Hjalmar is... Uh, plays a lot of Unvit that takes 5 damage to hit. That's just basically fantastic synergy. However, he keeps going. And this is the moment. What is Lord of, what is this Giant Boar going to do for us? If he plays, we Giant Boar. If he passes, we're loving life. Is he going to play and are we going to see the Giant Boar in action? We are. The Commander's Horn on 3 units. I mean, pro plays. Here we are. Oh my god. Well, we didn't hit the Lord of Unvict. We hit the Whale Harpooner. And we get a massive... Massive 10 point silver. Wow. Unbelievable. Why is Freddy Babes not using Giant Boar? I don't understand. Here comes the lady that likes to dance with a demon in the light of the full moon, which is not enough points for him. The ship comes down and we take this round. Well, he takes the round, but we've got the two card advantage, so we're, we're pretty happy. He doesn't dry pass either. Poor fella. Hopefully, he'll learn his lesson and see the beauty of the dry pass. So this is going to be a real comfortable game for us um, as he doesn't even get his card back on us. We go into the last round with a two card advantage in Hjalmar and Triss. So it's going to be super, super easy. No worries at all. And as you can see, 38 to 16 with a war cry still in hand. And we get some scraps, which are of course useless, but we do rank up and we get more scraps. Well, wow, aren't we lucky? Um, yeah. That's not what you want to see. However, we're going to play some score tail now and mix it up. We also did get five ore from the GG, so that's always nice. Now, there is actually some starter challenges that you get as well. I don't know if it's every day or what, but we've got some challenges, and one of them is win a certain amount of games with the Squirtel faction. I didn't realize that until after this game, but that's something we're definitely going to be doing to get more ore, is winning all those challenges pretty much whenever we can. So, yeah, this deck uh, revolves around using carryover, and dwarfs and we've also got the addition of pit trap in this deck which was one of our uh, packs 
on our first episode. However, Pit Trap is basically just, well, it is just a silver lacerate with this deck, as I don't have any movement. There might be one Dwarven Mercenary, but it's literally not going to do anything, because you, you get three points of buffs on your side. So, he leads in with Joachim onto um, a Master Disguiser, a Seal and Revealer himself, and we're just going to keep maintaining our composure let's not panic it's all going to be good we've got carryover down on the board oh my goodness he's just wiring scale shield his thing he's got a 33 point dude I've, I've got a 33 point dude i mean i mean what is he doing is he going for the reverse doo-doo does he want me to do do to do do my doo do mind games at their finest at rank six whatever it is anyway surely he's not going to buff this thing any higher right well if you were to think that you would be wrong because this is where we're at we're at the level where people set up your doo-doo so they can do do your doo-doo do you get what i'm saying because look at that thunderbolt potion doo-doo's just getting bigger do you do do or do you don't do do that is the question oh my god what on earth is happening the doo-doo at 46 points. Surely he's going to do-do my do-do. I don't want to do-do if he do-do's my do-do. We're just going to keep stalling. This do-do could get bigger. I don't want to get do-do'd by a do-do. Anyway. Are you going to buff your do-do up higher? No. You're going to last right. For some pretty good points. Is this the moment of do-do? It is. And oh my god. Are we about to see the do-do of his own into Igni? Are we about to see... Oh. Well, okay, we'll take it. Kind of disappointed, but we'll take it. Uh, into the next round, we had some carryover, and it's actually taken him two cards to get over this carryover. He played down a Emma Street into an Infiltrator, and then he plays this dude. So we go into the last round, bang, Pyrotechnician for the triple three, the nine damage from the Pyrotechnician. And it's looking like it's pretty much GG over here. Now, hopefully you guys are enjoying the Cake Smasher. What I'm going to try and do, I recorded all these games a few days ago. Um, I'm going to be doing an arena run pretty soon. Where it's going to be live, we're still going to chop it up and have one arena run for the episode. However, I really want to get to the point where I'm opening kegs at the start and the end of the episode. So what I think I'm going to do now we're a bit further into the series is I'll play probably like 10 games to get 4 kegs. 2 for the start of the episode, 2 at the end. And I will show you the best bits of the games in between. So I might show some full games, might show just highlights of various games. But hopefully you guys are enjoying this format and you are enjoying the series. Unfortunately, no keg to open at the end of this one. However, the next episode, we get something huge. And I cannot, I've not played with the card yet, but it's going to be fun. Thanks so much for watching. Take it easy. Subscribe if you're new. Catch you guys later. Deuces.